The Palestinian militant group Hamas has carried out brutal acts of terror against Israeli civilians, and Israeli and American leaders are always keen to tell us how dangerous and evil Hamas is. The inhumanity of Hamas. I have no sympathy for Hamas. That keep shelling Israel with thousands of uh, rockets and uh, mortar shells. But what if I told you that Israel helped create Hamas? Officially, Hamas, which is the acronym for an Arabic phrase meaning Islamic Resistance Movement, was founded in 1987, at the start of the first Palestinian Intifada, or uprising, against the Israeli occupation. But its roots were planted much earlier. The Hamas founder, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, was a half-blind, disabled Palestinian cleric and member of the Muslim Brotherhood. The Brotherhood had been repressed by the Egyptians in Gaza prior to 1967, but once the Israelis invaded and occupied the Strip, they didn't just turn a blind eye to these Islamists, they encouraged them. See, the Israelis, especially right-wing Israelis, wanted to undermine the power of the dominant Palestinian political force at that time, the nationalist PLO, at the heart of which was the secular Fatah party of Yasser Arafat, their bete noire. <laughs> By empowering Sheikh Yassin and the Muslim Brotherhood, Israeli leaders thought they could divide and rule the occupied Palestinians, play them off against each other, secular nationalists against religious Islamists. So in 1978, when Yassin wanted to officially register his Islamic association, which was basically the precursor to Hamas, the Israelis were only too keen to help. Yassin built and grew a network of Islamist social institutions across Gaza, including schools and clubs and mosques, and Israel helped fund some of those projects. Most American politicians have no clue about any of this, although the former Republican Congressman Ron Paul once made this point on the floor of the House. Hamas was encouraged and really started by Israel because they wanted Hamas to counteract Yasser Arafat. Arafat himself told an Italian newspaper, quote, Hamas is a creature of Israel. He even claimed that former Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin admitted as much to him, calling it a fatal error. Now, you might be wondering, why should I believe mad Ron Paul or the famously shady Yasser Arafat? Well, you don't have to. You can believe top Israeli and US officials who've basically owned up to all this. Brigadier Yitzhak Segev, for example, who was the Israeli military governor in Gaza and later told a New York Times reporter that he helped finance the Islamic movement. The Israeli government gave me a budget, he said, and the military government gives to the mosques. Colonel David Hakam, who worked in Gaza in the late 1980s as an Arab affairs expert in the Israeli military, has admitted that the original sin was Israeli support for Yassin in the late 70s. But at the time, he has argued, nobody thought about the possible results. Well, Avner Cohen did. Cohen was the Israeli official who was responsible for religious affairs in Gaza for more than two decades, and who now says, quote, Hamas, to my great regret, is Israel's creation. Yeah. Cohen's words. He actually wrote an official report to his superiors in the mid-1980s, warning them not to play divide and rule in the occupied territories, and calling on Israel to, quote, break up this monster before this reality jumps in our face. But no one else on the Israeli side really took the possibility of blowback seriously at that time. They never do, do they? Hamas has since killed far more Israeli civilians than any secular Palestinian militant group, and its leaders have been pretty viciously anti-Israeli and even anti-Semitic in their rhetoric. <laughs> Sheikh Yassin would eventually be assassinated by an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. Sheikh Yassin, and its organization, the Hamas, are responsible to the killings of more than 400 Israelis. So the question shouldn't be why now, I think it should be why not before. Why not before? Well, because before, Israel was actually nudging and winking at Yassin and co, building them up as a rival to Arafat's Fatah. The die was cast for blowback. 
blowback, incidentally, that they decided to double down on when they assassinated Yassin. You can hear the crowds chanting for Hamas, and any idea that this operation would actually suppress or diminish that organization seems to be ill-judged. The inconvenient truth is that Hamas is in part a creature of Israel's own making, an enemy that Israel spent more than 20 years helping to build up and then spent the next 20 years, the past 20 years that is, trying to bomb, besiege, and blockade out of existence. The three Gaza wars fought by Israel against Hamas since 2008 killed around 2,000 Palestinian civilians and a dozen Israeli civilians. That's the real human cost of blowback. David Long, a former Middle East expert at the US State Department under Ronald Reagan, told journalist Robert Dreyfus, I thought the Israelis were playing with fire. I didn't realize they'd end up creating a monster. But I don't think you ought to mess around with potential fanatics. It's a lesson both the Israelis and the Americans never seem to learn, though. And as usual, innocent people, in this case Palestinians and Israelis, continue to lose their lives as a result. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media App and BarGlobal.net. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. It does help support our productions. Also, please download the BG Media app to access the best works of the world's authors rendered in audiobooks, along with great experience through music, podcasts, and vodcasts.